But despite those warnings, the Conservative Party in Canada is suddenly changing course, and now they're also pushing for a NATO-enforced no-fly zone of some kind. Are they concerned about this widening into a bigger world war, and is it time for Canada to increase its military spending? Let's find out. Joining me now is the interim Conservative leader, Candace Bergen. Good to have you on the program. Uh, look, NATO continues to say a no-fly zone is a no-go, and, and that should happen, I think, in the Brussels meeting. They don't look like they're going to move on that. But you have now called for a no-fly zone over humanitarian corridors. So, so be specific. How would that work? Well, we, I actually did not use the words, nor did I say no fly zone, although I will say this, I, I don't think anything should be off the table. I don't think NATO should take anything off the table. But what we called for, and what I said in my, uh, in my comments when President Zelensky was speaking to Parliament, is that a minimum, at a minimum, the human, uh, humanitarian corridors should be protected. Uh, and uh, obviously it's up to uh, experts and, and others to talk about and decide what's the best way to protect those corridors, is it by protecting the airspace, or it could be by better equipping the Ukrainians themselves. But our point is, we, we don't believe Canada uh, or the world should just be throwing up our hands and saying that there's nothing that we could do. So we believe that there should be protection for those humanitarian corridors. Look at Putin, Putin himself said that he was going to leave them alone. And so I, I, I think that it would make sense that the world would say, well, Putin said he was going to and not be killing innocent people while they're trying to escape and leave Ukraine, then they should be protected. Okay, but how? Uh, you, your uh, ethics critic, former defense critic James Bazan is open. He said, look, it's either jets in the sky um, uh, or it's uh, providing uh, MiG-29s to uh, the Ukraine so they can do it. But NATO has been clear. They say, look, that's a red line. That will lead to a world war. That will mean shooting down Russian jets. That'll mean shooting at Russian missile sites, which are located on Russian soil. So I'm just, because you know Vladimir Putin has violated all those agreements. Are you prepared for that eventuality, that NATO forces somehow would have to take, to protect those means NATO has to shoot down either Russian jets or take out Russian missile sites in Russia? There, well, there's precedent for humanitarian corridors uh, in war zones to be protected. Uh, and I, I don't think that I'm the only one saying this. There, there are others that have said that it's something that should be discussed and that is doable. So what we're just suggesting is that Canada, uh, at least in the discussions, whether it's behind the scenes or whether it's uh, overtly and vocally, talk about the idea and talk about how we can protect protect men and women and children, right. uh, especially who are trying to escape But, but how would it work? I'm just, I'm, again, well, do I, you I have agree. a red note? But what's your I red line? I, I'm just trying to figure it out because, listen, it's heart-wrenching to see this. No one's, yeah. it's gut-wrenching, and these are wicked moral choices, we all know. So I, I'm not suggesting this is an easy one. But I'm just asking, do, is there a red line here? Like, do the Conservatives support the NATO position? No NATO jets? in the sky, no NATO boots on the ground, or are you saying actually let's revisit that for humanitarian corridors? I don't think NATO should take anything off the table at this point. And I, and I certainly don't think NATO should be announcing what they will or will not, will not do to Putin. I, I just don't think that's the best strategy. Uh, so I do agree with James Bazan. I think that whether, uh, I, ideally Ukraine would be able to shoot them down themselves but they need to be supplied with, uh, with those missiles to be able to do that. So that would be obviously ideal, but if they can't, there's got to be other ways that NATO or other allies can help to protect women and children, especially who are trying to escape. The NATO Secretary General has also called on allies to spend a minimum of 2% of GDP on defense. Canada spends 1.39 currently. Um, in your view, in this budget that is coming up in April, is it time for Canada to, to promise to hit the target of 2% of spending on GDP? It is. And, you know, I think it's fair to say all governments have failed. Uh, Canadian governments have failed at, at spending that target. But the world is changing so quickly. And in light of what's happening in Ukraine, uh, I, I believe all parties would be able to get behind. At least I can tell you Conservatives very much support that. But, you know, it doesn't help to just announce it and then not do anything. Uh, the Liberals are behind, I think, about $10 billion dollars in the promises that they've made to uh, to fund our defense, and they haven't spent that. So it's one thing to make promises, it's another to do it. And we very much would support 
uh, better spending, more spending for our men and women in uniform. Let me just speak, if I can, about the Conservative leadership race. Um, so we've got a, obviously a war going on in the world, but there's a, a political battle here at home. Uh, it's a nasty race so far. Uh, wh what do you make of the fact that you've got Mr. Pauly ever calling, you know, uh, Patrick Brown a liar and, and dismissing Jean Charest as a liberal. Uh, does that hurt the party? Does the, do these kind of divisions and this open attack ads hurt your party? Well, my goal as the leader during the interim is to bring our caucus together, have a united caucus, and we are very strong and united. Uh, my goal is to ensure that conservatives are proud to be conservative and that we are consistently conservative in how we approach uh, policy and things that are happening. So I would say I, I hope that the candidates, they criticize each other's record, they criticize each other's policy. I think that's fair game. But I, I hope that they don't say bad things about each other. Just like Ronald Reagan said, it's, it's not a good thing to say bad things about other conservatives. Well, they At are. The the By the way, I, I, too late. Yes. They, they've obviously forgot the Ronald Reagan dictum because they're saying bad things <laughs> about each other. You know it. They need to be reminded uh, of that, definitely. Because, listen, I, I think that uh, conservative uh, members and people who are thinking of buying conservative memberships uh, want to hear people's ideas. They want to hear what the candidates are going to be presenting. And so my encouragement to them is to, to stick to policy. There is a sense that there's a battle for what kind of conservative party it is. This happens after every leadership race. Is it a center right? Is it a populist party? But look, we've just come, we're in this war now, but before that we had the trucker protests. And a lot of your party members, including you, were outspoken about supporting the, the, the leaders of the trucker convoy, not only the trucker convoy themselves. Do you regret you personally supporting uh, the movement that involved the leadership who were advocating not only for illegal blockades, but at one point the leaders of that who were collecting the money were advocating overthrowing the government. Was that a mistake? Listen, I had many constituents actually in Ottawa. They wanted Justin Trudeau to listen to them. These are hardworking men and women who were tired of the overreach, the vaccine mandate overreach, which by the way continues with this government. All they wanted was the Prime Minister to listen to them. Instead, he divided, he wedged, and he stigmatized. I told them they needed to move the trucks. Obviously, they uh, should not, and, and they, they moved the blockades that were uh, at the border. Uh, we don't agree with any illegal activity, but listen. But did you nurture it? I guess that's my question. But no, is that, is that did, did you support no, it all along, and that, now you're saying that? Sorry, that that just doesn't that, that doesn't ring true. It's an, it's it's something that um, some say if you support someone's idea, then that means you support their behavior. And I, and I just disagree. I reject that. I absolutely support. In fact, right now, we are trying very hard to ask the government, when are they going to end the, re the restrictions and the mandates? And we don't think this government should continue to govern. And when we have an election, we hope that they are tossed out by the Canadian people. So um, I agree with many of the things that the protesters came to Ottawa to talk to the Prime Minister about. He didn't listen to them. He called them names. And I think calling them names, wedging, mischaracterizing what they are doing was the wrong thing to okay, do, whether it was for doing it or some in the media. And I wasn't going to be part of that. There will be a budget coming up. If, for example, the Liberals come up with uh, a big dollar figure on defense, I don't know if they hit the 2% or not, but billions of dollars to spend on defense, um, will that be enough for Conservatives to support a budget? Is there a red line on defense spending that you need to see? Yes, we want to see increase in defense spending, but we also want to see a break for Canadians uh, in, in terms of the, uh, the taxes that are being uh, burdened on them. Right now we have huge uh, high inflation, it's almost 6%. I can tell you we want to see the government do something to get their spending un uh, under control. Uh, in terms of uh, massive spending for pro pet, some of their pet projects, but in the wrong areas. And we need to see Canadians get a break. Uh, we've got some ideas actually we're going to be putting forward this week. We're going to ask the government if they will consider. We're going to put forward uh, an idea that we think is, is doable. If they would consider giving Canadians uh, a GST, HST holiday on gas prices. So we're going to ask the government if they would even do that ahead of the budget. But those are, those are some of the things we'll be looking for. Okay, as inflation is a big issue, uh, an ask coming from the Conservatives on that. Interim Conservative leader Candace Bergen, great to have you on the program. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Good to see you.